Our tale of the tape brought to you by Dave and Buster's. The only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. 3-0 Joey Davis. Take a look at that record. 3-0 for Joey Davis. 2-2. Two two. Let's see if that O goes to 4-0. We will soon find out. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for those joining us worldwide on the Bellator MMA Global app for tonight's prelims, we welcome you to Pechanga Resort Casino as we now go to the welterweight division set for three five-minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 168.2 pounds. His professional record early on stands at two and two. He fights out of North Hollywood, California, presenting Craig Grasshopper Plaskin. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 170.6 pounds. His professional record early on stands undefeated at 3 0. Oh, he fights out of Compton, California, presenting Joey Black Eyes Davis. In charge of the action, your referee, Rob Madrigal. Rob Madrigal, our referee, Joey Davis, one of three unbeaten collegiate wrestlers, but he's found a new home for his fists stop, stop, and elbows and the knockout. He has. He's turned to a great striker. Look at that kick right to the body, spinning heel kick. That's the difference now in Joey Davis. He's no longer a wrestler. He's a mixed martial artist. So it's Joey Davis and Craig, Craig Plaskett. Joey, you ready? Let's go. Here we go. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Joey Davis in the red gloves in the takedown early, but not very long. And again, nicely done by Craig Plaskett in the blue gloves. That's the kind of takedowns you're going to see. That was from a long distance, but that's the kind of takedowns you get when you have the wrestling pedigree that Joey Davis has. Joey Davis in top position. First Division II wrestler to end his career unbeaten, 133-0. Plaskett getting himself towards the fence so he can utilize that as balance for a balance point to get himself back to his feet. He doesn't want to be on the ground here with Joy Davis on top of him. Coming from Team Hyasan, does have a decent ground game. He'll look to pace Let's himself go. here. Two and two officially debuted as a Bellator right, fighter for Craig Plaskett in a tough get one out, against Davis. Get out. Circle, get circle, up. circle, circle, elbow in. Get elbow in, Craig. Back up. Okay, yeah, back and that up. move right there, you see Plaskett Don't work hard okay. to get himself back up and all in good work. And then Joy Davis just takes him right back to the ground again. Now he's in a position to try to get his head out of here. Now he can go back to doing what he does well. Joey Davis, a member of Team Body Shop, cousin of A.J. McKee, of course, very close with Rampage growing up. They have got a great team, super fighters working hard, and, and Joey Davis is one of the future stars in this sport. When you have that type of wrestling base, you have a great chance of being successful in the world of MMA. You're absolutely right, Mike, and it's because you can control for the most part, where the fight is going to be, and controlling where the fight is going to be is a huge portion in winning MMA fights. Look for the spin. Tried to do that same yep. spinning heel kick again. It worked for him once. Let's do it again. Plaskett was able to close the distance that time. Throwing out that jab. Orthodox stance from Plaskett, but he will switch back and forth. Yeah, he has been switching back and forth, and it's starting to cause Joey a little bit of problems. Even though you've seen that Joey is standing, he's standing very tall, but his feet weren't moving. Now he's starting to move again, and that's a smart movement for him as a fighter. Two fight win streak for Plaskett as he makes his Bellator debut tonight, fighting out of North Hollywood. There's that spin again. The confidence each fight just continues to grow. It does for Joey Davis. He's had he, his first fight. He had a hard, long fight. It went all three rounds. And I think he learned a lot from it. And what he's been doing in all of his fights from that point is he's been calm. And then when he wants to explode, he explodes in a big way. And it's been working for him. He told us his first fight scared him, 
And, and somewhere in that fight, he said, I needed to become more vicious. Well, that just shows he has some intelligence, because sometimes it's scary in there. If you don't have some butterflies in your first fight, you better check your pulse. Yeah. It's the wrestling that Joey Davis, you know, I, I've known him since he was a little kid. And his wrestling has just been outstanding through the years, all the way into the NC2A, undefeated for four years in the NC2As. That has only been done, as you said, three times. And you know, everyone knows Kale Sanderson. Joey Davis is the next guy to do that. And Marcus Levesser, four-time Division Three national champion, Auburn College in Minnesota. That one's back in the 50s. <laughs> Well, he was 155 and all that, I can tell you. Good job of separating the hands by Plaskett here. Don't let Joey Davis get those hands in a palm-to-palm -palm gable grip. Now he's going to have more control. Separate them. Plaskett has showcased some skills here thus far. Davis trying to overwhelm here in the last minute. And this right here as he's giving his back, putting his back to the ground in this position and saying, I can't move you from where I was at. I'm going to at least try to get to a better position so I can defend myself. Spinning back kick finish of Ian Butler, the elbow finish of Justin Roswell. The last two fights for Davis, his most recent at the Forum. And for a kid who was born and raised in Compton, he said it was a dream come true. Right there, that's a long shot on a takedown, but when you have the wrestling pedigree that we've been talking about, you can do those things as Joey Davis. It's when you work really hard like Plaskett does to try to stop these things, and then you get taken down again and again. It becomes frustrating as a fighter because you, you just don't know how to stop it. Saw so Gokar in the uh, corner of Craig Plaskett. Yeah, Gokar Chavikian, man, one of the... Uh, Big grapplers no, of our time, and just an incredible grappler. Great leg locks. Getting set for round number round two. Two. Round two. Let's go. Red gloves for 3-0 and Joey Davis. Debut for Craig Plaskett, grasshopper in the blue gloves. Good inside leg kick. And see, the big thing you were looking, look at Joey Davis as he's now, see that footwork. He's not standing still in front of him. Plaskett doesn't want to stand still in front of him, just like he's doing right there. Don't stand still in front of somebody and give them that freebie. Move, make them not sure of where you're going to be. Good pace thus far here early in round two for Craig Plaskett. Big swing and a miss. Straight to that double leg. Tough to defend. When it happens that fast and that level change occurs and you just don't see it until, oh, he's into you, you got problems. And Joey Davis has talked to us about being around winners his whole life. Being around Jim Brown when he was a young kid. And of course, Rampage was literally his hero growing up. Yeah, well, you know, I, I have pictures of Rampage and Joey Davis when Joey was a little boy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they are, what Joey Davis has done with his ability to meet some of these people and then take, again, look at that lace that you saw on that wrist. That's what gets him right to that now possibility of the ring chip. It's not gonna work, but that's how you open up those possibilities. Almost got him to the full mount there. Good control by Davis. Rampage sponsored Joey at age 13, gave him his first mouse piece. <laughs> Joey's been working for LeBron James yep. and Sean Merriman. You know, he's got his, he's not <laughs> just thinking of fighting, he's doing all kinds of stuff, and that just shows what kind of person he is. He's picking some good dudes, some good bosses. Yeah, it's not bad. You got good budget. Quality. Yeah. Mike Goldberg, big John McCarthy, Jen Brown, Pachanga Resort Casino for the Tenth time in Bellator history. So right here, high head is going to win. Joey needs to get his head out from here. There you go. You want to get that head up on top. That's going to get you your position for your leverage. 
Of course, Joey's teammate and cousin A.J. McKee. Outstanding start to his career. Antonio McKee has so many studs at the body shop. And I'm telling you in talking with him, the one that he's really high on is Joey Davis. He goes, he works so hard, he learns so fast, and he listens. That's what I love about him. He listens to what I tell him, and as soon as I tell him how to do it, he's training how to do it, and then it becomes part of it. Uncle Antonio for Joey said he's a coach, father, he's the best friend to me. Under two minutes left in round two, and Plaskett's still hanging around. Yeah, yeah, I'm really impressed with what Plaskett is doing as far as he has put out a ton of energy. And I can tell you, I've done fights of his before where that energy started to wane and he got tired and that was the end of the fight for him. And he's not doing that here. He is working hard to get himself back up. He's working hard to defend himself at times. He's trying to be offensive. Everything he's doing is saying, man, I'm here to win this fight. Pacing is so important. Good spin, looking for a finish. Good job of putting his back to the ground to get himself out of the rear naked choke by Plaskett. There goes that lace on that arm again. That's going to cause him some problems if he doesn't turn. 5-0 and as an amateur, 3-0 and as a professional. 24-year-old welterweight. At this point, you can see the same thing with Joey Davis that you saw with Tyrell Fortune. That wrestling background is saying, oh, I'm going to go hip to hip instead of starting to put my hooks in to control the hips and, and crush them down to the ground. I'm just going to put pressure on your hips, keep you there, and start pounding you out. Really picking up the pace here, looking for the finish. Yeah, shots are getting heavier, too. Joey grew up fighting his entire life, looking to drag Plaskett back down. Robert Madrigal right on top of the action. He's looking for a leg lock. Don't think he has it in the position he's going to be in. Now he's got to extend it out for a knee bar. It would be his first career submission finish. The one thing you don't want to see is what Joey Davis is doing of just sitting there. Don't just sit there. He's going for a toe hold. Don't sit there. Start to defend it. He doesn't have anything right now. Take a look, you can see him reaching across, taking away the left hand with his right hand to open up that left hand striking. That is just fundamental MMA ground and pound type positions that you're seeing out of Joey well, Davis okay. that are you can, they're, you can they're get just it again. little things, but they're so fundamentally strong when you have a wrestler like Joey. All right. Team high stands, Craig Plaskett. Let's go. And team body shops, Joey Davis. Come on. I don't know if it was done on purpose, but that's a smart thing because Craig Plaskett is tired. It's like, let me get just a little bit more rest and get that mouthpiece in. Or is he waiting for Rampage to give him a mouthpiece? <laughs> Look for that spinning kick early. And the takedown. So explosive. Makes the guy think that, oh, he's going to go for strikes, changes levels, brings him down. This is where now Joey Davis needs to start posturing and start landing big, heavy shots. That's what's going to get Craig Plaskett into a bad position and make the referee think about possibly stopping the fight. Davis went the distance in his first professional fight in Anaheim at Bellator 160, unanimous decision victory. Second two fights both ended in the first round, so Joey Davis going into deep waters again here. There's a lot of openings that you're able to see here for Joey Davis, but right now he's just thinking of using his fist, ground and pounding his opponent. He's not even looking at submissions that are available to him. And hey, that, you know, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you want to think about, I want every option and every opening I can have to make a decision on how I'm going to finish this fight. Which is what we talked about a little bit with the fight in the heavyweight division previous to this with Tyrell Fortune. Exactly right. You, know, it's, you can get to positions where you can make it to where the fighter cannot respond. That's smart fighting. Craig Plaskett has taken a lot of shots. He has put out a lot of energy in defending himself against what Joey Davis has been doing. And he's starting to wind down a little bit here. 
you can see that he's getting exhausted. Can't tell where there's a cut. There's somewhere from one of those elbows. Yeah, I did Joey Davis too. opened him up. Yep. Notre Dame College of Ohio. That cut looks like it's near the left eye of Craig Plaskett. That D2 powerhouse where Davis wrestled was better than about 75% of the D1 schools at the time. Not a bad school. <laughs> Not at that. all. Big elbow opened him up. And he throws another one there. Those slicing elbows. Midway point of the third and final round. Half guard. Try to defend yourself, Craig. Joey Davis looking for his third consecutive finish. You know, this is, it, it's not the flashiest style of fighting, but man, it's effective. And it is, so, it, this is the grind that a wrestler brings to the, the world of MMA. You just do everything you can to try to stop them, and they just keep coming, and they, that pressure never stops, Mike. It's just brutal. Break the will and spirit of your opponent. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm giving it to Craig Plaskett. Right now, Plaskett has not given up at all. He is still trying. He's exhausted, but there is no quit in him. He is continuing to try to fight and get Joey off of him and try to do something. You see him trying to get up here. He's got to get that hand to the ground. That's why you see Joey reaching over and taking that hand away from him so he cannot do it. He gets to his elbow. That is not going to get him up. Joey Davis saw that success in wrestling. Traveled all over the world as a kid, too. I mean, this is a guy who has competed not only at the highest level for the longest time, but at 16 years old, went to Amsterdam by himself to compete. Dangerous place to go, 16 years old. 16, but he was there to compete. Not dangerous for people hurting, correct. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> Very true. Final minute of the fight. You know, right here, this is a position where if he puts the hand on the head and starts dropping that hand, sliding it off for an elbow, those are hard, heavy elbows. He's just working at grinding on Plasquette. Plasquette keeps on working. Now he's going to get for that leg. And you can, you know, look at him, he can end this. It's not going to happen with what he's doing right there. That's not a solid heel. You would have to turn it over. It's not going to work. Final second to the fight. It is all over. They go the distance. Joey Davis, Craig Plaskett, they exhausted. And credit to Craig Plaskett, because Joey Davis put a lot of punishment on him. And Craig hung in, and Grasshopper did not go away. <laughs> Look at the change of levels here. Boom. Drives into him with a double leg. That was after that spinning kick, then starts lacing that hand, opens it up, goes after a left hand, ground and pound with him. Going after the side of the head, you can see Plaskett trying to turn his head and make it so he, he doesn't have a target. Here's the elbow that cuts him. Watch him turn it over, boom! That big shot right there with the right elbow, that's the one that opened up that big cut on Plaskett. You can see him starting to wipe it. You can see the blood there. That was a solid elbow. The official decision is in, and here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Jackie Dinkin, Luis Cobian, Marcos Rosales. All three see it exactly the same, 30 to 26. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Joey Blackhawks. Our tale of the tape brought to you by Dave and Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. 77 inch reach, that's huge compared to 69. Ed Ruth likes to strike, even though he's a great wrestler. Michael C. Williams with the official introductions.
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight from Pachanga Resort Casino, Bellator MMA now stays with the welterweight division set for three five-minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at five foot nine, weighing in 170.8 pounds. His professional record: 15 wins with two losses. Fighting out of San Diego, California, presenting Andy the Tooth Fairy. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 170.7 pounds as a professional. Tonight, he's undefeated five wins, no losses, fighting out of Fresno, California, Easy and Rude. And the referee in charge of the action, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee, Penn State's Ed Ruth also likes to finish with the KO. Ed Ruth is a monster. I am telling you, I have not seen anybody in the last two years that has the potential of Ed Ruth in MMA. He is going to be something special. Three-time national champion, four-time All-American, four-time Big Ten champion, and man, can he put the lights out on an opponent. You, and you saw that right hand. He loves the stand-up game. He is not the wrestler that's going out there for double leg takedowns. He wants to knock you out. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Easy Ed in the red gloves. Andy Murad in the blue gloves, the Tooth Fairy. 17 professional fights, 15 and two record. Wrestled in high school in San Diego and started his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with an old school guy named Dean Lister. <laughs> that, is a, that is one hellacious grappler, as we would say. Dean Lister is a guy that has, he opened a lot of people's eyes about leg locks. He is phenomenal. What you're seeing right now with Murad and Ruth, though, Murad's landing leg kicks while Ruth is landing punches to the head, and he's landing heavy punches. Both these guys are good at the stand-up game, and they're going to go after each other. Right now, Murad is a good wrestler, but he cannot wrestle at the level that Ed Ruth does. A couple of Bellator fights early in the career of Andy Murad. His only two defeats have come inside the Bellator cage. <laughs> right there, nice move by Ed Ruth. Yes. Ducking under, get the back, taking Andy Murad down. And he's landing big shots here, Mike. Those hurt because you cannot see him coming. Crazy Bob Cook, very impressed with not just the skills. The skills are obvious, but the work ethic of Ed Ruth. Marcos Padilla, training partner Chris Honeycutt, been in Fresno. But of course, grew up down the street in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, from the former light heavyweight champion, Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis. For a long time, I have said that John Jones is the best mixed martial artist I have ever seen as far as the skills that he brings to the cage. And the one person that I've seen that I think can match that is Ed Roof. He has the ability to be that guy. His skills are amazing, and his ability to to function in the stand-up game with a calmness and the power that he possesses, he is a dangerous guy everywhere. He is now competing in jujitsu competitions. He is the same, he's the same platform and the same makeup of what John, has made John Jones who he is. He's even got better wrestling credentials by a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Penn State's first three-time national champion. Four straight national championship team member under Kale Sanderson during his days as a Nittany Lion. And man, that was a ton of fun when both he and Phil Davis fought back at home in the Bryce Jordan Center. Yeah, that was a special moment for both those guys. You look, Phil Davis was an NC2A champion for Penn State, and Ruth was a three time as far as individual and four time as far as team. Ed basically broke all of Phil's records. Yeah, he's that guy. Ed was nice enough not to tell us that, though. <laughs> Phil did. Ed was humble enough yeah. not to not to kind of try to dig in a little bit on Mr. Wonderful. And you look at the pace that Ed is, is putting on right now. Man, this is tough because 
you're doing everything to stop what he's doing, and he just, as soon as you get yourself out of a problem, he's putting you back into another problem. And he has a motor that does not stop. You see Phil Davis right next to Crazy Bob Cook in the corner of his fellow Nittany Lion. And just relentless attack here early. Here comes that choke, looking for the finish. He let go of it. Obviously, he felt that it wasn't there, but right now he's in a great position to end this fight. And again, coming up under the arm, those are shots that you do not see, and so when they hit you, they do a lot of damage. You can't take your head and move it away from him. That's why he keeps going after him. Fifteen seconds on the clock here in round number one of this welterweight fight. Good start for Easy Ed. There's Mr. Wonderful. That is one of the nicest dudes you will meet. He is a good man and he's a great fighter. And crazy Bob Cook. Take a look at what happens here. Murad's going for the single leg on this. Watch what Ed Ruth does. Reaches around, boom, just turns. Now he's got the position. Leg trip to the outside, takes him down. And from that point, look at the knees that land here. That's a heavy knee to the ribs. You can see right away, Murad's arm came up inside to say, oh, I don't like that. And the shots that come up under the arms are the ones, man, those hurt. You don't see them, they hurt big time because you cannot prepare for it. Nine fight win streak for Andy Murad. Are you, Murad ready? Are you ready? Fight. Has not been defeated since April of 2014 by Ricky Rainey at Bellator 116. And this is, you know, Andy Murad is a tough dude and he's skilled everywhere. His stand up is good, his wrestling is good, his submissions are good. He is an all around MMA fighter with a lot of experience and he's going against a guy who now has five fights coming into this one and you can see how Ed Ruth is just dominating the fight when it gets to positions. Right now, good leg kicks by Andy Murata. Keep going after that. Slow him down. The Tooth Fairy trying to open things up. Quick switch kick fighting out of San Diego as well. Born in Detroit. Eight one. Ed Ruth is looking to land that right hand. He has got that distance down, and he keeps on switching stance. But when he reaches over, he is touching that right hand, and one of them is going to land solid. He's got long arms, long legs, and turns it over nicely. Man, Andy Murad is tough. You see that kick glance right off the top of his head. No matter what, that hurts. Got to love what Andy's doing. He's continuing to go after him, trying to damage that leg, slow him down. And you see that Ed is switching stance because it's like, ah, I want to, I don't want that leg to just yep. to get damaged that much. Some blood on the left side of the face of Andy Murad. With all the switching of the stance, I don't know if it was a jab or a cross, but it was a punch. <laughs> it was a punch, no doubt. <laughs> you don't win nine straight if you're not a gamer. No, you don't. He is coming out here, man. He's throwing everything he can at Ed Ruth, and he's giving him some looks. He's giving him some problems. But you can see the calmness and the ability to control that fight and where it's at is all within Ed Ruth's ability. He's the guy saying, I want this to be on the feet. He isn't even trying for takedowns. Ed Ruth finished his first two fights in round one, his second two in round two. But in Budapest, he went the distance. He did. That was the first time he ever went the distance in a fight and just landed huge shots. But you're, never, you're not going to put everybody away. There are guys that can just take those shots and keep coming, just like what Andy Murad's doing right now. Just past the midway point of this three-round fight. Andy's getting beat yeah, up. He's he getting cut up bad. He's got cuts under both eyes now. 
That left that jab a moment ago. Seamless from Southpaw to Orthodox for Ed Ruth. And look at how it's, you can see he just stays right outside. He can't stay outside of that kicking distance. That's going to be there, but the hands are not touching. <laughs> see right there, just a little bit off. You know, it's that quickness. He's able to control that distance to the point of it just misses. Partner, you mentioned earlier about you know the skills of John Jones and now Ed Ruth and what you think his capabilities are. When he began his MMA training, it was with John Jones and Chris Weidman. Yeah. And again, it's the calmness that you see. Look at, just look at the position yeah. of Ed. Look at his facial demeanor and what he's doing in the fight. He's not pressing, so he could continue to do this for, uh, I mean, 10 rounds because he's in phenomenal condition and he's not stepping on the gas. He's working, but he's not pushing it to the pace where he's going to burn out. And it's notable that this is his first welterweight fight. Fought at 92, 89, a couple at 185. Last fight was at 175. He said, hey, the weight was just coming off. So I decided, let's go for 170. Let's try to, you know, win and become a champion in the welterweight division. Well, I know when he fought in Budapest, he had to lose an incredible amount of weight, two pounds, to make the weight. <laughs> and that fight was 175, so he had to lose seven this time. <laughs> The one thing I would say is Ed, you know, he keeps on, he's going high. Yeah. And the body is open, and that body will get you that knockout if you put those hands on it. He needs to stop being a headhunter and look at the entire body of Andy Moran to attack him. That body will shut down the body. Oh, that was a big shot right there. That hurt him. Big shot again. Right hand. It's touching him. Long reach, turning those punches over. Final seconds of the round. Andy Murat trying to make it. Good shot. And it's all over. He stopped the fight. And it was the right decision by Jason Herzog. It is over. And Ruth with the finish. I'm going to guess that 459. And a half. And a half <laughs> of the second. Nice leg kick by Andy Murat. But look what happens. One, two, straight down the pipe. And this is the difference in this fight. Watch the shots hit. That's a big shot. Another big shot. All of those are landing flush, and Andy Murat cannot stop the attack. That's why Jason Herzog comes in. He has taken a lot of damage. He has tried. Great victory for Ed Ruth. Michael C. Williams will make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Jason Herzog waves off the contest due to unanswered strikes. Official time, four minutes, 59 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO, still undefeated, easy, Ed Ruth. Ed Ruth moves to 6-0 and oh in his professional career. And he gets the TKO finish with about a half a second left in the round. In our tail of the tape brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. John Jordan Young, 8-0 against Jamal Pogues. Look at the reach on both guys. 60, we're looking at 76 and a half, 77. They're exactly, as Mike would say, virtually almost. identical. Not almost, <laughs> virtually. Virtually. Here's Michael C. Williams. <laughs> Chaka Resort and Casino, the bonus coverage worldwide and the Bellator MMA Global app begins now with three five-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 203.7 pounds. His professional record, four wins, one loss, fighting out of Victorville, California. Presenting Jamal, the Stormtrooper, Paul. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at six foot four, weighing in 204.8 pounds. His professional record undefeated. Eight victories, no defeats, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Jordan Young. And the referee in charge of the action, Rob Madrigal. Rob Madrigal, our referee.
Bonus coverage right, at 205. Jordan, you ready? Hogs and yeah. Young. Let's go. And we are underway. Tonight's fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. 8 and 0 Jordan Young in the red gloves, fighting out of American Top Team. Jamal Pogues in the blue gloves, fighting out of Joe Stevenson's camp. One of the things in talking with Joe Stevenson, he is so high on Jamal Pogues and what he can do. He believes that he is the very best fighter that he's ever trained. Wow, that's a big statement. That is a huge statement. We'll see if it's true because he is facing the real deal in Jordan Young. 22-year-old Pogues against 23-year-old Young. Mike Brown in his corner. Mike Brown, great fighter, and maybe even a better coach. 3-0 and in the Bellator cage for Young. Those are his last three fights. Bellator debut for Joe Stevenson's Jamal Pogues. He's got that leg to the outside like you see. That's why you see Jamal trying to step off of it. If that leg is the outside, it's going to create a pressure. It's very hard for him to get that single leg. And John, you were telling me Jordan Young controls distance very well, and he can bring some big knees. He can. He is devastating. When he gets that tie plumb, he starts bringing knees. You're in trouble. You have got to move yourself out of there. He's going to hit you with one that's going to put you to sleep. Heavy hips down, that breaks what Jamal is doing with his takedown. That's what, if you're Jordan Young, you're winning that battle. You're doing the right thing. You're stopping the takedown. You're coming out to be in the range that you want to be in. Long reach, good stiff jab. Well, Jamal Pogues looked to take this fight into the clinch or down to the ground. Beats a couple more of those he might. <laughs> you know, he's, he's eaten quite a few. Not only that jab, that right hand keeps on touching him over the top, and you see him blinking from it. Both guys, as John pointed out, with some pretty long reach. Good head control by Jordan Young, taking, pushing that head over, creating an angle, stepping out. Very smart, intelligent fighting from Jordan Young. <laughs> Glad you are staying with us on the Bellator app. Terry Melendez up next. Well, most of the time, Jordan Young has been fighting at 185 pounds. This is at 205, and at light heavyweight, he's not having any problem with the strength of Jamal Bogues and his speed. You can see he's doing well with his punches. Looking for that. Ty clinch in the plum. Nice, nice little sneaky elbow inside. He's got that nice overhook. He's putting pressure, putting all that pressure down on the arm, controlling the wrist. That's all smart fighting. This is, you know, Jordan is very calm in what he's doing, and he's making Jamal actually work with more energy to try to stay with him and that's going to be the difference if this fight continues to go into the other rounds look to utilize his hands to set up a clinch there's one of those knees we were talking about you see that knee come up because of his length he hits right to that sternum and man i'll tell you when you take one to the sternum you think i i'm gonna i'm having a heart attack i remember stephen bonner talking about a body shot he took and he said I, my, my body literally shut down yeah I, I couldn't do anything i think i remember who it's from <laughs> i think there's some guy that was a bug yeah <laughs> you never heard him called a bug before that's funny <laughs> is he a spider yeah it's something like that yeah, the spiders are good to you <laughs> absolutely Working for it in the final 30 seconds of this round. Now Jordan's got the he's got double underhooks. He's got control of the position. He's the one deciding what's going to happen. It's a matter of does he want to take holds to the ground or does he want to just stay here and 
It looks like he's breaking apart. There you go. It's always good when you're listening to fighters' corners and they're talking in words and terms such as lovely. <laughs> Late in the round, let's look for the snap seven, right? But he's right. You watch what happened in that round, and a lot of people are watching a fight and they don't understand what's the difference. It's the difference in the, the shots that landed. Jordan Young had the shots that were the cleaner, crisper, sharper blows. Round two. A lot of Round grappling from go. 12, but he was not successful with it. But it was lovely. But it was total, all lovely. It was lovely. Red gloves for Jordan Young. Blue gloves for Jamal Pogues. Round one. Round one definitely goes to Jordan Young. Pogues now going after him, and that's a nice setup. He came after him with a lot of strikes. Change level, got into his legs, gets into the ground. Now let's see what he's doing. You see how Jamal is trying to use that leg wrap. That leg wrap is going to keep Jordan's legs up off of the ground. He's not going to get up if those legs are in that wrap. He's got to get his legs free so he can start to bring a knee down to the ground, put a hand to the ground, swing his legs out. And you can hear his corner saying, use your legs, much like you were just describing. Yep. You see him folding that leg back underneath. He brings that and pulls that out. There you go. That's what's going to put him back on his butt. Yeah, I love Joe Stevenson. The coaching of Joe Steven is awesome. Guys, you can hear him anywhere in the arena. Season two, ultimate fighter winner at welterweight on Spike back in the day. I will say that Joe Stevenson is one of the best coaches as far as seeing things before they happen and talking to his fighters and telling him, walking him step by step through the transition that he needs to take to either get himself to a better position or get out of a battle. Jordan Young is looking up towards the referee like, well, he's not doing a lot. Well, neither are you, Jordan. He's put you in that position. Get yourself out. Back-to-back -back submission wins for Jordan Young. In fact, six of his eight victories have come by submission. What Jordan really needs to do is he needs to go and either get an underhook and swing his legs to get himself out or just post on his hands and pop himself up. But he knows that his legs are going to be there for Jamal to try to take him down again. So that's why he's looking towards the referee to have the referee stand him up, which is going to get him free of what Jamal Pogues is doing. Midway point of the fight. Bonus coverage here on the Bellator app. Tiani Valley and Kerry Melendez next. So you can see that right there. He's grabbing that ankle, pulling that leg out, just making it so Jordan cannot get himself back on his feet. All, all of it is really smart, just intellectual fighting by the part of Jamal Pose. Cage control. Worthy of note, the last two fights for Young also ended in the very first round. What you're seeing right here is, you know, there's not a lot of damage being done, but there is a difference in what both fighters are doing. Jordan is completely defensive. He can't get himself out with everything he's tried. Jamal has stopped it and put him back in this position, and he's in position where he is slowly, systematically breaking down his opponent, and that's what MMA fighting sometimes is all about. Jamal Pogues suffered a TKO loss in his professional debut, has not been defeated since. How many people have we seen that have lost their first fight, Mike? 
and have turned out to be unbelievable fighters in the sport of MMA. Many. How about Chris Cyborg for a while? Yes. Yeah. No one realizes, oh, her loss? Yeah, that was her first fight. Was that like her only loss in life? Yeah, yeah well. Well, no, there was one in a uh, Muay Thai match. Yes, there was. <laughs> Marina Bars. But that's a girl that's undefeated herself. There you go. Final seconds of a very good round number two for the Stormtrooper. Although Jordan Young yeah. looks son impressed. Yeah. Oh, perfect. You can see right here, Jamal decides, you know what, I'm just going to come after you with punches and change levels, get into your legs. Now that I get into your legs, I can get you down to the ground. And that's what he does. That is good technique. That is smart fighting, setting things up. You see Jordan trying to get up. Look at that. With the leg, he keeps on grabbing and holding that leg, keeping him from being able to bring it underneath him. And that's what's keeping Jordan on the ground. That's all smart, effective fighting from Jamal Post. It's one to one. One to one, you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Joe Daddy Stevenson knows how to score a fight. Right, guys, let's go. <laughs> Five minutes. Unbeaten Jamal, record right on the line. Jamal, right Jamal here, Pokes, all kinds of fired up. Jordan Young. 3 and 0 right, inside three. the Round Bellator three, gate. Go. Young can sneak in a uppercut here and there. He also has a very effective flying knee when he decides to use it. Hard to do both of those things <laughs> when the distance time. is closed immediately, right? That is true. Hard to, well, other than an uptick, how to kick somebody from your back when you're on your back. Well, here he goes again. Look at that's the same technique that Jamal used in the second round. He's going after him, making Jordan put his hands up to protect his head, drops, chains levels, brings him up, takes him down, and he's now back into his legs. And John, we talked about this in round number one. Will Jamal Pogues prefer to fight on the ground or in the clinch? And the answer is yes. And <laughs> it's been effective. It has been effective. He is grinding here. This is when you're watching it, sometimes you think, Oh, like right now, there's not a lot going on. No, there is a lot because you're trying to control balance. As uh, If you're Jordan Young, you're having to control your balance, making sure that you stay heavy actually into the fence to create a friction so the fighter cannot just take you down. That fence can be helpful for a fighter and it can also be a detriment at times. If you're the fighter trying to take someone down and they're against it, you actually have to work against what it creates in friction. Three and a half remains. Bonus coverage. Here on the Bellator app. And this right here, at this point, Jordan Young needs to start creating angles with his footwork and start putting shots on Jamal Pope so he can't get into his legs like that. If you're standing straight in front of him, he has the ability to try to run through you. And he's done it very well. Good blast there. It is. And again, look at where Jordan's legs are at. He's got his legs contained. Now he's getting his hooks in. He doesn't have both. Only got one. Jordan needs to keep that left leg from getting inside and getting a hook on him. But he didn't do it. Now it's inside. And Jamal's going to be able to start to control position with this. Out, puts it back to the outside. And you can see that hand keeping it there. Midway point now of the third and final round. Getting high. This is what Jordan Young wants. He does it right now. The, the sweat and all that is, that it gets slippery. It's hard to hold on to another human being when he doesn't want you to hold him. So if you're sweaty and you want to be held, it's okay? Yeah, it makes it easy because you're not trying to win it. <laughs> you're not the slippery fish. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, it's something, you know, you get used to. <laughs> you roll with Jeff Blatnick for a while, and you realize what real sweat is. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you talked with Jeff Blatnick for a while, you realize what real sweat is. May he rest in peace. Yep. The Olympic gold medals. Great man. Absolutely. My first partner. Well, you were referencing 
I met you that same trip from Japan. Yeah. Many years ago. Right here, Jordan has the ability. He can take Jamal down. That might not be a bad idea since he's not re being. Yeah, there goes that slipperness again. Now he ends at the bottom, going for the triangle. Has the arm. He has the ability to set this up. He's got to control that arm, make sure that he stays tight with that arm. That's going to keep him there. Hey, did he get it? Yes, he yes, did. Yes, he did. Nicely done, Jordan Young, winner by submission. I talked about it, John. Six of eight wins by submission. Now it is seven of nine. Take a look right here as he slips off his back. Boom, goes to the ground. Jamal jumps in there, but that triangle brings the leg right over. Now it's tight, controls the outside leg, and now he's got that arm. And with that arm in position, you can get that tap. Great job by Jordan Young. Watch it again. And there's the tap. And he's doing that because he controls the position and makes it so Jamal cannot move to take that pressure away. Third straight win by submission for Jordan Young to make it official. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a triangle choke officially. 315 to round number three by submission. The winner, still undefeated, Jordan Young. Undefeated, Jordan Young. 315 in the third and final round with his seventh submission victory. Terry Melendez and Tiani Valley. One and oh apiece, the big difference here, look at the age, 34 to 23. Tiani Valley is a young fighter, but I can tell you I have been in the cage with her and she is tenacious. Terry Melendez comes from a kickboxing background. MMA is new to her, but she brings a stand-up game that is outstanding with a name from a legend. The 23-year-old Hawaiian, including her amateur fights on a seven-fight win streak, with the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at Pachanga Resort Casino, we now go to the strawweight division set for three five-minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner at five foot five, weighing in 114.5 pounds. Her professional record one and zero. Oh, she fights out of Maui, Hawaii. Introducing Tiani Tipa Mali. Across the cage, her adversary out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 116 pounds. Even her professional MMA record stands at one and oh. She fights out of San Francisco, California, presenting Carrie Melendez. And the referee in charge of the action, Michael Bell. Michael Bell, our referee, the champ, watching. The Hawaiian Tiani Valley. And here's Kerry Melendez's last fight. Look at that right hand. Look at what Kerry Melendez brings. She, girl with power. That was a beautiful right hand. And that's what puts people down. You got to love how she goes after someone. That's that First kickboxing round, right, background. You're Some okay. loyal Hawaiians. 23 year old Tiani Valley in the blue gloves. Kerry Melendez in the red gloves. Well, I can guarantee you. Tiani will not back down from Kerry. She's going to go after us. She is a tough young girl, and she believes that she has the strength to stand with Kerry Melendez. Well, uh, Kerry Melendez's MMA debut lasted 47 seconds. That's pretty good. Not bad at all. Outstanding kickboxing pedigree. She might have already hurt her, John. Eh, she didn't hurt her. She caught her off guard a little bit, but she came in and she took one of her own on that. Both girls are opening up. Carrie Melendez kickboxed under Scott Coker early in her career. Of course, her husband, one of the best fighters of all time. He's a legend. Her husband had some of the greatest fights in strike force that you could ever hope for against Josh Thompson. Those are three classic fights. How about Gilbert Melendez, Diego Sanchez? Well, I think I know someone who called that. Fight. Yeah, I, I do too, and it was pretty darn good too, wasn't it? It was. It was outstanding. Their daughter turns eight in August. 
Carry half Filipino, loves Manny Pacquiao. Who that is part Filipino doesn't. That was a big right hand she landed. So Mark Munoz definitely does, and so does Brandon Vera. Yeah, hey, they do. And so does Apple from the Black Eyed Peas. You never thought I'd come up with that one. I didn't. I like how calm Carrie's being. She's being methodical. She's landing good strikes. Not opening yourself up too much. You start doing that in the beginning and then realize, ah, that's not the smartest way to do this and uh, settle down. Moved to the Bay Area at 19 years old from Santa Monica. Began training Thai boxing in 2005. And not just her husband, Gilbert, as a mentor and a coach, but a lot of great fighters and trainers surrounding Kerry Melendez. Nice counter hook that she hit Tiani with there. Wow, oh, he's nice hook done. again. That's the punch that's getting through, and it's getting killed. a nice big right hand. Looking for the finish right here, right now. Can she lock it in? Yeah, it's over. She is not going to get out of that. It's tight. Is she breathing a little bit in there? But it's not going to go anywhere. It's all over. Carrie Melendez by submission. Her first career submission victory. Nice that you see Carrie being very smart, hurting her with the stand-up, but then realizing I've got a good chance with a rear naked choke, taking that submission. And it all started with a couple of big shots at Rockton. It was. The Two kicks and everything added seconds. up, but Step it was the left hand choke. that started making the difference. That right hand hits her square, puts her on her back. She goes after her with punches, but quickly switches to the rear naked choke. Watch this right hand, boom. Hits solid while she's already leaning backwards off balance. Not that it really hurt her that bad. You see that hand going back that's saying that she's not out in any fashion, but this rear naked choke is tight, and it's just a matter of time before she either has to tap or is gonna nap. Nice performance by Terry Melendez. Now 2-0 as a professional mixed martial artist. To make it official, Let's go to Michael C. Williams once again. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a rear naked choke officially. Two minutes, 46 seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, Carrie Melendez. Two MMA wins, both in round number one. Congratulations, Carrie Melendez. Our tale of the tape for this, our first fight of the night, is brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. 19-1 for Juan Archuleta, 19-8 for Robbie Peralta. Both of them are outstanding fighters. Their reach is not virtually identical. It, it is. is identical. <laughs> Michael C. Williams to get things started. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Pachanga Resort Casino Live on Paramount Network. Miller Lite presents Bellator MMA. Tonight, the action begins in the featherweight division. Set for three five-minute rounds is brought to you tonight by Boost Mobile. Get the best value in national prepaid wireless. Easy to switch, easy to save. And now, first, introducing the blue corner. At five foot seven, weighing in 145.3 pounds. He is professional record, 19 wins, eight losses. He fights out of Escondido, California, presenting Robbie Ramos Peralta. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 146 pounds, even as a professional. 19 victories, just one defeat. He fights out of Venice Beach, California, introducing Juan the Spaniard Archuleta. In charge of the action, your referee, Mark Smith. So, Mark Smith will be our referee for this featherweight fight, getting things started here inside the beautiful Pachanga Resort Casino. Robbie Peralta. Robbie ready. Juan ready. Juan Archuleta. Here we go! Tonight's fight 
Clock is brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Archuleta, 19 and one in the red gloves. Robbie Peralta in the blue gloves. You see it, Juan Archuleta is gonna be very cautious of Robbie Peralta's right hand. He has got a bomb in that right hand and everyone knows about it. And it comes from a looping fashion as Archuleta looks to close the distance early. Tenacious and good chain wrestling and going after that takedown. We'll talk a lot about this gym called the Training Lab as the night continues. Syed Awad is doing his workouts, his training there as well. Juan Archuleta working under Sam Calavita and wrestling coach, our good buddy, the Filipino wrecking machine, Mark Mar Munoz. I tell you, if you look at the corners and, you, and if you win a fight by who's in your corner, Juan Archuleta's got DJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson, and Joe Big Daddy Stevenson, man. That's Joe, not bad. Not bad at all. It's a lot of wins. Big heavy knee strikes by Juan Archuleta being very smart and being precise with what he's doing right now with his pressure on Robbie Peralta. Oh, oh man! Flying knee and it landed. Great start for Juan Archuleta. Outstanding start because he's right now you can't predict anything that he's gonna be do. Be careful. Has not lost since March of 2015. 14 fight win streak. When we talk about transitional MMA and what you're seeing out of Juan Archuleta right now, you don't know if he's gonna be grappling you, striking, flying knees, he's throwing everything at Robbie Peralta right now. And Robbie Peralta's been around this game a long time. He's fought a lot of the best in the world. And Juan Archuleta, Big John said, this is the toughest test of my MMA career. It is because of the background of Robbie Peralta and what he brings to the cage. First off, the one thing he said, he goes, we're both Mexicans. He goes, that means that I know he's a tough sucker. I'm not gonna, he's not gonna quit on me. And he's right, Robbie doesn't quit in fights. Robbie is tough, but he's taking some big shots right now and he's trying to respond. You gotta give it to Robbie Peralta. He's trying to weather the storm that Juan Archuleta is putting on him right now. Archuleta. Very frenetic pace here early. They step back, take a breath, and the action continues. Red gloves for Archuleta, blue gloves for Robbie Peralta. Robbie Peralta right now showing the veteran status that he has, and you know what? I had this guy coming after me. I'm just gonna calm this down. I'm gonna take my time. I'm not gonna do something stupid and rush trying to show that, oh, I can do the same thing. Peralta has been in all types of battles. So to be overwhelmed is something that does not often happen to Robbie Peralta. No, he, Robbie has seen everything. He's been in events against very high level fighters. He knows how to control himself and to know that I can't win every second of the fight. It's not about winning every second of the fight. It's about winning those key moments. Has trained with his cousin Johnny Hughes for years. Derek Anderson. Bellator lightweight, nice switch there. By, beautiful job by Juan Archuleta. He's gonna go for the double, saw the momentum, switched over, now he's back into that double leg. He is chain wrestling so well right now, and it's so hard to deal with, and Robbie Peralta is doing a great job of slowing it down. He said, even with the move to the training lab, Joe Daddy Stevenson, still my head coach, always will be. Bang Ludwig has been at the training lab a ton, working, of course, with T.J. Dillashaw. And Juan Archuleta talked about how great it is to work the pads and work the Muay Thai with Bang Ludwig. He did. He talked Congrats about shorts. that Bang Ludwig is changing who he is as a stand-up fighter, and he is now becoming a smart stand-up fighter instead of just an aggressor. 29th pro fight for Robbie Peralta, fighting out of Escondido. Spent a little time at Alliance MMA. Eric Del Fierro does such a great job leading that spot. He's an outstanding coach. Doesn't get a lot of credit. A lot of people don't even know who he is, man. He's just there for all the big stars that you see. <laughs> it's a little wild, right? That's unpredictable. Yep. Good start to this battle. Good start to the night. 
Tonight's corner cam brought to you by Boost Mobile. Easy to switch, easy to save. Let's check in with Jen Brown. She's going to talk about the Spaniard. Well, thanks, Goldie. Hey, you guys were just talking about Juan Archuleta's recent switch to the training lab. He was up here in the locker room. He was hooked up to a heart rate monitor. He was hitting pads with Joe Daddy Stevenson, TJ Dillashaw. But Sam Calavito, he was over in the corner, and he was monitoring Juan Archuleta's heartbeat. Now, he was calling out numbers. He was telling him to get it up. He was telling him to get it down. It was all on a computer screen, and he was monitoring. Now, listen, when we talked to Juan Archuleta yeah, this week, he said he has made the biggest difference in his fight game, talking about Calavito. He said that sometimes the difference between a great fighter is 2%, and it's that 2% edge that he thinks he has that's going to get him the win tonight, guys. Jen, thank you very much. Saeed Awad, also a part of that team, who said Sam Calavita is amazing. Sam Calavita is an Iron Man. <laughs> he is an Iron Man. He does the Iron Man in, in Hawaii, and the island of Hawaii. That's the big one. That's it. 15 years it took him to qualify for the biggest of them all in Hana, the Iron Man. So there's going to be hard to whine about your conditioning to a guy like Sam Calavita, who probably just rode his bike 200 miles at about 5 in the morning each day. I'm tired, coach. I don't care. <laughs> Good pressure here early, round two. And good job of that left hand. You see that left hand? Well, the reason he's bringing it inside there is Robbie wants to get that leg to the ground to get up, just like he just got it. If he could get that leg down, he can get himself back up. Peralta motivated for his family, his three daughters. Busy house lately for Robbie Peralta. Trying to slow down Juan Archuleta here in the start of round number two. He is slowing him down as far as his takedowns. He's doing a really outstanding job of controlling what Juan Archuleta is coming after him because Juan keeps on utilizing different techniques and Robbie is stopping all of them as far as that. He, he gets taken to the ground, but he's not taking damage when he's down there. Good takedown defense by Robbie Peralta. And I always think back to that go, looping go, punch that he landed on Clay Guida that opened him up big time. And that's something that Juan Archuleta talked about. The looping punches are hard to spot when you're talking about Robbie Peralta. Yeah, they are, but when you're in this position that Juan Archuleta's putting the fight, you don't have to worry about those things, and that's what's making him the smart fighter that he is right now. I take away those tools just by yes. the positioning of where I put you. Robbie said, I didn't have much growing up. Always saw my mom struggle, and that's what motivates me. My family, my kids. I have a 14, six, and four month old daughter. Midway point of the fight. Robbie trying to knee tap there to get him down. Big John Robbie talked to us about this being a huge second chance, uh, possibility of a reincarnation for his MMA career. Very excited to get the call to fight in Bellator. He was excited about not only being able to fight Bellator, but who he was going to fight. Yes. Because he said that made me excited. That's someone that he kind of he kind of gets my juices going. He scares me a little bit, and that's good. Archuleta said, everybody on my training team knows Robbie Peralta. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. July 13th begins a doubleheader weekend for Bellator. Three world titles will be on the line over two days. Friday, featherweight champion Julia Budd defends her title against undefeated jiu-jitsu ace Toledo Nogueira. Then the next day, July 14th, Daniel Vleischer gets a chance at redemption. He faces featherweight champion Patricio Pitbull for Bellator MMA gold. And then immediately following MMA, it is Bellator kickboxing. The featherweight title on the line, Kevin Ross and Gabriel Varga, all on Paramount Network. This right here is a grinding fight at this moment up against the fence. That clinch work is difficult and it is taxing to both fighters.
Good exchange. And another knee. And again, look at the, vari the variety of the attack that Juan Archuleta is bringing is the difference in this fight right now. He is going after Robbie with more than just punches, more than just a kick. He's opening it up into all different realms, and that's what's giving him the edge. Nineteen years old. Robbie Peralta made a trip to Tijuana to fight. Found out that he was fighting the champion down there. I said, how'd it go? He said, it didn't go very well. <laughs> but he was hooked after that. Good takedown late in the round for the Spaniard. Mike Glover, big Mike John Glover. McCarthy. First fight, featherweight division. Third and final round. 14 fight win streak on the line for one oh. Boom! Just right there! Hit is all over! Stay here, stay here. 15 fight win streak for one Archuleta. Tonight's fight replay brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spice Rum. The bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Watch Juan Archuleta, watch his feet as he sets. Big overhand right, right on the chin. Boom! That puts Robbie down. Referee's seen enough, he's not responding. Look at the dip, boom! That shot right there is gonna drop anybody in the 145 pound class. You cannot get hit with an open jaw like that and survive. Big shot, big Ten shot by Juan Archuleta. Tenth career knockout for Juan Archuleta. His 20th career victory, he remains unbeaten inside the Bellator cage. Pachanga Resort Casino nestled in the Temecula Valley's picturesque Southern California wine country just completed a $300 million renovation. You got to check out the pool. It is outstanding. Outstanding finish for Archuleta to make it official. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator case, it comes to an end officially. 14 seconds into round number three. The winner by knockout, Juan the Spaniard Archuleta. 15 fight win streak now for the Spaniard. He will visit with John McCarthy. I know you wanted to take that gas mask off. <laughs> nah, I love it. All right, you came out here and you showed a tremendous variety of attacks. You're, you were chain wrestling things together. You're going flying knees, punching combinations. Tell us where that's coming from. Man, that's just a beautiful team that I have behind me. Joe Daddy Stevenson leading the way, TJ Dillashaw, Dwayne Ludwig, Cub Swanson, Daryl Christian, Mark Munoz. I mean, it's a Hall of Fame corner, let alone, you know. So those guys, I'm the hybrid of their teaching, and I, it's, it's greatly appreciated. They put time and time and, and more time in with me th than I do with my own family, you know. It's a blessing. It was, it is a Hall of Fame corner, and I was listening to what they were telling you about hip to hip on your takedown and giving you great information, and you said, screw that, I'm coming with an overhand right. How did that thing feel when it landed? Man, it's just game plan. You know, Joe Daddy's game plan, uh, th there's no one else that's going to beat me in the world, man. With, it, with, a, with a training partner like Cub and TJ, man, there's no one in the world that's going to touch me. And, uh, you know, I just got to give all glory to God, honestly, man. That's, that's who's put me here. That's put me on this platform to make a difference. And I'm truly blessed every day waking up, seeing my beautiful family. You know, right before I got here, it's, uh, it was a little emotional, you know, my, my daughter was at VBS and uh, I get a call from a teacher that she passed out and had a seizure, you know, so it was like, man, I don't know if I can come here and fight tonight, but uh, honestly, with the corner I have, their family, you know, they made me feel, they, they, they made me feel calm and collective and said, go out there and take your time this time then, don't, don't be in a rush to end it. Well, that was an unbelievable performance. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Juan Archuleta. Great family man. His wife, Janae, and he dated since high school. Juan Archuleta, his 20th pro win, comes 14 seconds into the third round, and it comes by knockout.
Our tale of the tape for this flyway fight is brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. You see the difference in experience in those records, and you see there is a difference in the age. Does the experience win, or does the youth take this fight? Laterno Williams, Michael C. Williams. Live on Paramount Network, Bellator MMA, presented by Miller Lite, now moves to the flyweight division schedule for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first the blue corner at five foot eight, weighing in 125.4 pounds. Her professional record undefeated, two victories, no defeats, fighting out of Edmond, Oklahoma, Christina Warhorse Williams. And across the cage, her adversary out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 126 pounds, even as a professional. She stands tonight at nine and six by way of Volta Raton. She fights out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Valerie Trouble Laterno. Let's go again. Let's go. Let's go again. The referee in charge of the action, Rob Madrigal. Rob Madrigal, our referee. Back up. Get over here. Or the first of two flyweight matchups on the card here tonight. Christina, you ready? Valerie, you ready? Let's go. Here we go. The Turtle and Williams. Tonight's fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Trouble. Valerie Laterno in the red gloves. Warhorse Christina Williams in the blue gloves. They exchange kicks. Both of them trying to establish distance, see what the other one's doing. <laughs> Professional since 2007. Laterno has seen it all. She has fought the best of the best. When you look at who she's fought, she, she has gone the distance with Joanna. You look at that fight. She is a good fighter. She is just at a, she was at a weight that she couldn't sustain her conditioning for the rounds because she would drop too much weight. Stuck a right hand in the face of Christina Williams there. Went the distance for the strawweight title against Joanna Yonjacek, and now that's one of her main training partners. Three times Valerie fought at 115, and she said, oh man, I, I, I don't know why I ever did that. Why I ever did that. It, she wanted to torture herself, and that was what she said she did. This is the range right here when you're seeing. When you see Valerie coming, she loves the boxing range of fighting. She doesn't so much like to stay on the outside like Christina is going to want to be at the kickboxing range. Valerie likes to come inside. She feels comfortable inside, says she can see everything, and likes to land big shots, especially the uppercut. Knocked down. Christina Williams just pushing forward. For such a young mixed martial artist, she has a ton of confidence. And Laterno's up. And she's showing a lot of maturity just in that mo moment right there because she could have gone after her, could have jumped on her, and put herself in a bad position. Take your time. You have a lot of time to win this fight. Might have been four times at 115 for Valerie, but she wants to forget all of them, <laughs> regardless of how many there were. They all suck. <laughs> that was nicely done. Set up with the hand and then body kicks. Oh, the great right hand. That hurt her. The turner with the elbow now. Williams able to get it to guard. And she closes the guard. Good shot from Valerie Laterno. Was that big elbow right there? Look at what Valerie's doing when she's trying. She's posturing. She's getting herself up, even though Christina's trying to break that. She's still getting big shots through. Christina has recovered from the shot, but now she's in a position she doesn't want to be in this fight. Now she's on her back with Valerie on top of her. Valerie's got very good base in her jiu-jitsu. She's good on the ground, and she can land big shots. Been at American Top Team for many years. Hector Lombard, Mike Brown, Paramba, and a new striking coach, Robert Navon, for this one from up in Montreal. She talked about him a lot. 
I talked to Robert about Valerie striking. He said, John, you're going to see a completely different fighter today than you saw her the last time when she first came to Bellator. We do have an armbar attempt, but it is not there, and Valerie is blocking it the right way. It's a matter of does she take how many shots does she take from Christina? The armbar is not there, but Christina was landing some good shots on her from underneath. Letourneau, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since 2009. She has been all no gi since then. Oh, I need to do something here. Williams works her Jiu-Jitsu with Douglas Fry at Genesis Jiu-Jitsu. And she's training with Jin Yu Fry, who is a stud fighter from the victim. 33-year-old Antimweight and Montana De La Rosa. You can see what Christina's doing with this. She's got a body triangle on her from guard, and all that's doing is keeping Valerie right where she's at. But it's not going to do anything for Christina in either. Okay, getting out of there unless the referee stands you up from it. Turn, 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 turn. turn. Well, in that position, you're looking. It is actually Christina who is the one that is stalling the fight based upon what she's doing with her legs, because she's the one saying, I want to lock you into this. Big right hand from Valerie Letourneau is the big shot here in the first five minutes of this fight. Final seconds. Spin and a miss. You can see, look, it goes with a hook kick. Valerie dips her head, rolls right over the top with a right hand, lands it flush. That was a Run big two. shot Run from two. Valerie Letourneau. Her corner very happy, they loved it. Hector Lombard also said, don't get too excited on the ground. Don't go for things that aren't there. Let the fight come to you. And what he's talking about is that arm bar attempt was because she starts, she has an arm on the ground and Christina takes advantage of that. Don't rush. Think about what you're doing, set yourself up and then attack. Lombard owner of the fastest knockout Fastest finish in Bellator history, six seconds against Jay Silva back in 2010, Bellator 18. Get paid by the hour with that? <laughs> Thank you, Corey Grady. Nice kick to the body from Christina after a really nice kick up high by Valerie. Valerie, that kick is landing for her, and it is, although it's Hitting glove at times, it's still getting through. Williams does a really good job of turning those shoulders and, and fighting long. And that's what she's trying to do here. She does a good job of starting to blade herself, but exactly what you're seeing, if someone is blading themselves, they are open to kicks. If you're going to get someone that's going to blade their body, it's hard to use your hands against it, but it does open them to kicks. And that's what you're seeing with Valerie. She's attacking her in that fashion. A true pioneer. French-Canadian Valerie Letourneau, the first woman to fight in Nova Scotia, Ontario, and the province of Quebec. She's been down in South Florida for many years now. Facing 2-0 Oklahoma City native, Christina Williams. Landed another big right hand over the top. That right hand keeps finding its spot right over the top of Christina's left hand. Don't forget, fans, find new official Bellator MMA gear, Kimbo Slice Bobbleheads, and much more at bellatorshop.com. You hear that one. Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy, Jen Brown. Our crew here at the Pachanga Resort Casino for the 10th time. Good flurry. And a finish with the high kick. Both girls are standing in the pocket. Neither one is backing off. They're both going after punches, kicks. What you're seeing is they're both trying to establish that little bit of dominance that's going to make the other person start to be the one that is starting to have to counter what's going on. Letourneau said Christina Williams has really good fighter instinct. She's a true fighter, and she was excited for this matchup because of this job. And that's exactly it. That's what she's talking about yes. when she says, Christina Williams got really good fighter. And see, Christina Williams, when she goes after you, she doesn't stop. 
she doesn't back down. You hit her with a shot, she continues that offensive attack. That is what makes her a hard fighter to deal with. She's gritty. Both women love to strike. Valerie said she doesn't see this fight going the distance. She said, I just can't see it happening, and then laughed a bit. Watch out for those elbows. A little bit of dirty boxing inside by Christina, grabbing the head. Almost a little Don Fry Takayama there. Big John, you asked Valerie Letourneau about the elbows of Christina Williams, and she said, one punch, cut distance, and avoid the elbows. Something to look for as the fight continues. And it is, and it's one of the things that Valerie has to be concerned with as she's fighting Christina, because as she comes in to land her blows, Christina rolls her, especially her right elbow. She rolls it over the top, and it comes between your guard and hits you right in the middle of the face and can do a lot of damage. Oh, right hand that time from Williams. Christina Williams putting together some very nice combinations. Both girls are. Both of them right now are landing good shots. It's a matter of who's going to connect with the one that does the damage. Monday conference call. Big John, what would be the fight of the night in your opinion? What could be? I think you said this one. I think I said it was uh, Valerie against Christina. So far, so good. They're doing good. Look at this is this is a. a this is a chess match right now. They're both still trying to figure out how I can most effectively see that right elbow coming over the top right there. That hurt. You can see the Valerie backed off of it because it hurt. That's what you're looking for. And then you saw the Taekwondo background of Williams with the sidekick. Yep. Man, what an answer here in round two by Christina Williams. Bloodied up, but far, but beat. Ah, the beautiful Mercedes. A mainstay here, part of the Bellator family. Great to be inside Pachanga Resort Casino. The corner of Christina Williams said, all right, I'm gonna give you that one. This is 1-1, one, one, five minutes remain. You agree? I do agree, but unfortunately, that doesn't mean the judges agree. Oh, both of them going after it. Look at the big shots landing. Christina Williams is a, she's a savage elbow after her. She wants that kind of fight. We have ourselves a fight. Will Valerie Letourneau look for a takedown? If Valerie Letourneau is smart, she will. And this is what we were talking about before the fights, is look at you don't have to prove that you're the tougher stand-up fighter. I want to put the person in, their, in the world that they are not as strong in. And Christina Williams is not as strong. There you go. That's a smart fighter in Valerie Letourneau. That's a veteran. There you go. Move her to the fence and try to work her. Ah, Denise Keoholtz is loving this fight card. It's beastie. Girl power. That's a five-time world kickboxing champion. She knows a little something about it. Valerie Letourneau does get the takedown. We talked about it in, in the prelims, and we talked about it with Valerie Letourneau that she learned from the Holly Holm, Megan Anderson fight. I would hope that she did, because that's what you're seeing by her taking her down. She's saying, you know what? I'm a good stand-up fighter, but so is this girl, and I'm not gonna sit here and try to say that I'm better. I'm gonna put her into a world that I know that I'm better. That's what she did by taking her down. By the way, I continue to try to convince Denise Keoholtz to come in to a Janet Jackson song one day. <laughs> just saying, I'm working on it still. I just like the word that she used in beastie. I know, right? Girl power. That's it. See, the, right now with Christina Williams, she needs to get out of this position. That foot on the hip's a good idea. Stop going back to the closed guard. It's going only going to keep Valerie on top of you. Put your feet on her hips. Start to move your hips. Get space so you can get up. This is what Letourneau talked about. She's gone to it here in the third round, and it is working. Because Christina Williams came storming out at the beginning of this round. 
that opening of that round was awesome. Both of them just starting to throw. That's what you talk about, just grittiness or being beasty. Being beasty. That's Igor Zhang. Denise Keel holds both now Bellator MMA fighters, which is awesome. The referee just told him that they need to improve, which is telling Valerie, you need to start to posture. You've got to create space so you can start putting heavier shots on your opponent. That's going to let the referee keep you there. So the husband wife team loving this fight is Beastie. 90 seconds on the clock. Big John has it 1 1. Third and final round. And the way these two women have performed, this has become more of a top contender fight. Yep. There's your separation. That's because you were not getting the bigger shots. You're not getting Valerie starting to posture so she could bring power. And Christina doing a good job of controlling that posture. Yep. Getting the standoff. And watch for her to go wild right now with strikes. She needs to get busy. Look at she's behind yep. in this round. And she knows it. But she can still win this round, but she has to be busy in what she does. Don't sit there and wait. Go after it. What a fight. It's so easy for us to sit here and say, go after it. And we're not the ones in there. Our hearts are at a normal beating range. It's so hard when you've been fighting for 14 minutes to say, oh yeah, I've got all that energy. And again, to the ground they go. There's nothing there as far as guillotine. She does not have the ability to end this with what she has, but she should think about trying to switch it to a triangle. The triangle is going to give her a better chance of a submission. The guillotine is not. Final seconds of this matchup. What a fight. Absolute battle. Tonight's fight replay brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spiced Rum. The bowl 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Watch the turnover. There's that big right hand that dropped Christina Williams down. Beautifully timed, well placed. This is, look at them going after it. Look at Christina Williams just throwing caution to the wind. Going after her, big shots, grabbing dirty boxing, grabbing the head, all of that. That's a girl that's going trying to finish. Still gets hit, still comes forward, has no backup in her. You got to love someone that's got heart like Christina Williams. As advertised, Letourneau and Williams put on a great show. The official decision is coming up next. Uh, what a fight between Valerie Trouble Letourneau and Christina Warhorse Williams. With the official decision, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Jackie Dinkin, Michael Bell, and Marcos Rosales all see it the same 29 to 28 for the winner by unanimous decision. Valerie Trouble Laterno. Ah, uh, what a great fight. Two competitors leaving it in the Bellator cage. Big John will visit with Valerie Laterno. There you see Hector Lombard. I understand you're happy. That was a battle. Christina Williams came in here. You dropped her with a huge right hand. Did you think that you had her at that point and you were going to take the fight right then? I was hoping. <laughs> Save my face for this battle. I know, like, she's a dangerous fighter. I had to respect the skill she has. I've seen hole in her game, like, when she fought Ducote, so tried to take advantage of it. But, you know, she's a young fighter. She's going to improve so quick. So, um, look, I'm just happy I got the win tonight. Well, we were talking about you being a veteran fighter, a smart fighter, and instead of matching strength for strength, you decided your ground game was better, and you took her to the ground. Do you think that was the difference in the fight? I actually changed my mind on game plan this week. So <laughs> I'm glad I did. Um, yeah, Mike pushed me to work on some takedown. I'm not crazy about wrestling, but you know, I've been doing jujitsu for so long. I'm really comfortable in the ground. 
I just love to strike. People know I love to punch, man. I just like it. <laughs> well, that's your second win here in Bellator. Do you think that that fight right there puts you in a position for the winner of tonight's championship fight? Hey, I've been waiting seven months for this freaking fight. Please give me that shot, okay? I thought that whoever was going to win tonight deserved to fight for the title. I was totally going to give it to her. She, she deserved it. So. Well, I'll tell you what, that was an outstanding performance. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Valerie Latourneau. I love the honesty of Valerie Letourneau. She's like, well, you know, yeah, I knew I had to take it to the ground, but I, I like to strike. I tried to change my game plan. Probably a good idea that she didn't. And what a team she does have. Mike Brown and, you know, it's, you know Hector Lombard Whoa! and Robert Title Vaughn. Time, and you saw baby. some Title great time. striking this evening. Our tale of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening, brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Both guys 35 years of age, a lot of experience, a lot of maturity. We will find out if Cy Adewad and the change to the training lab will lead him to another victory. With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA presented by Miller Lite now features tonight's Colt Main Event 3. Five minute rounds at 160 pounds. And now live on Paramount Network, we introduce the Blue Corner. At 5 foot 10, weighing in 159.9 pounds, his professional record 11 wins, 5 losses, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, presenting Ryan Couture. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 159.8 pounds, entering the Bellator cage for the 17th time. Tonight, he stands with 22 professional victories, nine defeats. From San Bernardino, California, introducing Sayed the Assassin. in charge of the action, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee for this, our co-main event of the evening. Cy Adewan, Ryan Couture. First round, buddy, ready. Buddy, ready. Fight. Here we go. Tonight's fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Cy Adewan in the red gloves, Ryan Couture in the blue gloves. He will look to close the distance and utilize his clinch game. That is what Ryan has to do. He's going to utilize an inside leg kick a lot to try to disrupt Syed's balance. And he's going to try to utilize footwork to get himself inside, get in that clinch. Once he's in the clinch, he's in a very good position to control what Syed does. Good jab by Couture. Ryan said, I, I got to take some punches. Take a little damage to get to my world. Well, he but he's took, been doing that for a while. He just took a little damage with that right high kick because that hit him flush on the noggin. Three fight win streak for Syed Awad. Watch your fingers. You good? We talked about the gym change, the training lab earlier in Juan Archuleta's fight. Their teammates under the leadership of Sam Calavita. Ryan just shook out that left hand. Keep an eye on that. A lot of times when you're throwing a punch, that thumb will actually get folded over a little bit. Kind of feels like you almost break it. So it's something that happens a lot because of the gloves that we utilize in MMA. Even this, with, with having Saad, Syed on the outside, this is okay for Ryan. This is what he's looking for. Syed has to decide, do I really, there you go, and he's trying to push up. Do I really want to be in this position, or do I want to be at distance so I can do my damage? Ryan's last fight was the one we just showed you a highlight of earlier against Gozali. He was scheduled to fight back in October of 2017, suffered a torn meniscus, pretty good recovery, said he feels fine. And now he's trying to work his game and Syed Awad gets out of the way. There's one thing I know, Syed's coaches, TJ Dillashaw being one of them, did not tell him to go in there, I want you to grapple with him. That is not the game plan. He wants to stay on the outside and he wants to strike because that's where his chance of winning this fight is best. Cub Swanson, teammate, corner. 
for Syed Awad. Good combination by the assassin. Good straight right hand. That right hand just missed the mark. But that's the kind of thing you just start to get that distance, get that timing, and boom, you'll land it just a little bit down the road. Midway point of round number one. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Our co-main event, Couture in the blue gloves, Saidawan in the red gloves. And I know the belief in Ryan's corner is that Syed is going to tire out. He has done that in the past, and they believe they can push the pace on him to the point where he starts to do that again. Which is what Syed said will not happen because of his time at the training lab, because of his training under Sam Calavita. He said it has been mind-blowing. And as we said earlier, and it was Syed who told us, John, took 15 years for the Ironman to get to the big one in Hana. And congratulations, Sam Calavita. That's a lot of work. That's just an accomplishment. Man. But this right here, again, you see that Ryan's got that gable grip with this clinch work. This is where he does his best work. This is where he can do things that can tire Syed out and make it to where his punches are not as strong and he's not as fast. And there's Syed starting to get a little wild, trying to, you know, it's that whole thing of, well, you had me there, I want to get back at you. Slow yourself down, be calm, be smart. My trainer at home, Master Paul McGowan, has got about 15 black belts. Now he's an Iron Man. I ask him every day, why? <laughs> why, dude? Because I have a screw loose? Exactly. Because he can. That's a big shot right yeah. there. He's getting hurt by that right hand. Oh! That right hand hurt him back. Looking for a finish here. A lot of time left. Scott is inside the wall besides just coming. Big throw go. against Couture. Ryan's in trouble. Jason Herzog right on top of the action. Is smart. That's the exactly what it's all over. Syed Awad. First round finish. How good was that? Our fight replay brought to you by Blackheart Premium Spice Rum. The bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Watch this shot right here. This is the one that hurts. And that straight right hand, even though it gets blocked a little bit, you can see it stiffen him up. He goes back, and then Syed just starts going after him. The shots that he's are getting through. Not big at the time, but just a volume that Ryan cannot respond to. And then he'll land one big one off of it. You'll see him go to the body. When he goes to the body, that's what drops him down. There's the body shot going. Puts him down. Good stop by Jason Herzog. Great job by Syed Awad. We will make it official when we return to Pachanga Resort Casino. This is Bellator MMA on Paramount Network. Now the largest resort casino on the West Coast, Pachanga Resort Casino offers guests approachable luxury with subtle elements of the tribe's native heritage woven into architectural and resort experiences. And it is great to be back here tonight. Spectacular finish by Syed Awad to make it official, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Four minutes, 29 seconds into round number one. Referee Jason Herzog waves off the contest due to unanswered strikes for the winner by TK Hall, the Assassin Syed 17th career finish for Syed Awad. 10th knockout. All of his knockouts have come in the first round. Here's Big John. All right, brother, that was an impressive display. Once you heard him, you went after him, you did not stop. When was it that you hurt your hand? Uh, I, I, he was throwing a lot of feints and overhands, and I think I caught him on the top of the head. About two minutes into the first round, or this was the first round, but <laughs> two minutes into the fight, uh, I think I broke my thumb. But yeah, hey man, he's tough, very tough. I didn't think he was gonna stand with me at all. I thought he was gonna come in and try to take me down, but he landed some good shots. My lips busted, my legs hurting. He got you against the fence in a clinch one time, and when you broke out of it, 
it almost looked like you had gotten mad that you were in that position for so long and you went after him with it. Were you angry at that point? Yeah, man. I only got one thing on my mind. I don't know who else is deserving of a title shot but me. You know? Premise, get healthy. Chandler, make up your mind on what you're gonna do. I just wanna give a quick shout out to my wife. Just had a baby boy, Ace. I got two kids now. Shout out to my homie, Fee and Wee, always supporting me. And shout out to my crew. And especially shout out to Sam Calavita. My man's a machine, turn me into machine. The longer I take to get a title shot, the better I'm gonna get. So I ain't even tripping. Well, congratulations on a big win. Four wins in a row. Your winner, Syed Awad. Syed Awad with his 15th career. First round finish. Here tonight, inside Pachanga. It's brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. I want you to look at that 7071. What is that, Mike? That is virtually identical. <laughs> With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Miller Live presents Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network tonight from Pachanga Resort and Casino. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Women's Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carbelli Chair, Executive Officer tonight at Cage Side, Mr. Andy Foster. Tonight's world title fight brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner at 5'5", five five, weighing in 124.6 pounds as a professional. She's nearly perfect. Seven victories, one defeat from Medellin, Colombia. Introducing the challenger, Alejandra Azul Lara. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 125 pounds even tonight. In her first defense of the title, she enters undefeated for seven professional victories, no defeats. By way of San Diego, she hails from Honolulu, Hawaii, introducing the defending Bellator Women's Flyweight World Champion, Elimine. In charge of the action, Mike Beltran. All right, ladies, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Tough goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go, ladies. Mike Beltran, the referee. Alima Lay McFarland, the champion. Alejandra Lara, the challenger. All right, ladies, fight together for five. Round. Let it fight. Five minute Let round. Let's go. Here we go. Tonight's fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Red gloves for McFarland, blue gloves for Lara. Lara talked about she's got some different things to bring out. Well, she came out in a soft southpaw yep. stance instead of the orthodox that she normally has come out in. That's just trying to throw Elimelech off a little bit. Both women have good grappling skills. They both have outstanding grappling skills, Mike. Both of them. They just do it in different ways. There's that rubber guard. Going to mission control here, trying to just take away the posture of Alejandra Lara on the ground. But right now, with her sticky, 
being that she doesn't have a lot of sweat, this is a good time to try to open up. There it is, bring that other leg up high and start working towards triangles. Lara spent her entire training camp in Mexico for this fight. Team Grosso Lobo MMA in Guadalajara said she may move there to train there permanently. McFarland, of course, in San Diego. Right there's good attack right here. This is a problem for her. She needs to keep her arm from being straight. You don't want it extended out past your head. Although it didn't work, that's the type of attack that Alima Lay needs to bring out if she's on her back. Alima Lay McFarland, four wins by submission, three arm bars, one rear naked choke. She doesn't have control of that arm right now, but she's in a good position. There you go. Switching it into a different type of attack, and that's what she's doing with the triangle here. John, what's Lara looking to do? Lara right now needs to crush her hips down. In this position, don't start to try to pull yourself out. That's going to help what Alina Lay is doing. Continue to put pressure straight down. Keep those hips collapsed. Lara said she knows Alima Lay McFarland is a very experienced grappler, dangerous striker. One of the things that can happen in this position when you're in this, if you don't have it exactly right, and, you, and if you're Lara, you can survive in it. Alima Lay's legs can get tight. They're going to get full of lactic acid from being in this position. She's working it. She broke that, that lock. That foot came off. Now she's back to a normal guard. Biggest fight of Alejandra Lara's career. 23-year-old fighting for the belt. She's looking to take the back. Started karate at age four. Right now, Lara's trying to figure out that balance position of where she can put pressure to keep Alimale down without her rolling, just like you're seeing right here. Lara, little Sanchal, little Sonda. But it, right now, Lara gets to, this is a good position. She's inside control, and this is gonna take away a lot of what Alimale does with her 10th planet type of jujitsu. Trying to advance position here and isolate that arm. That's good jujitsu by Lara, but she's getting a little high. Good back and forth ground battle thus far, north south. You see Lemay trying to reestablish garbage, she doesn't do it. That flexibility is going to help. But one thing that Lara's got on her side is she's got great flexibility too, and she can bring her legs far away to keep that guard from being reestablished. Ali Malay said she thinks she has the slicker style of jiu-jitsu. Time will tell. She may have the more aggressive style and the one that's more flamboyant, the way it goes after attacks. But that doesn't mean that it's better than the person that has the base jiu-jitsu that comes from Brazil from long ago. Good finish here in round one for Alejandra Lara. Tonight's corner cam is brought to you by Bruce Mobile. Get the best value in national prepaid wireless. Easy to switch, easy to save. Round one in the books. Valerie Letourno watching very closely. She suffered a broken nose in the fight. But that is one tough, tough competitor. And she's looking to Alejandra. face the winner of this one. That eye looks great. I love John when she told you that she changed her game plan this week. <laughs> like, I'm going to strike. Like, quit yeah. telling me to oh, grab her. Exactly. But it was a good Ready decision fight. in the end. Let's go. Congrats to Valerie Letourneau. Round two of our title fight. Southpaw again for Alejandro Lara. 
He said, my biggest advantage in this fight is my unpredictability. Well, and as, again, as you're seeing with what she's doing there, Stan, she's very bladed. So Alimale should be attacking her with kicks. It, it, go with what the fighter's going to give you. Don't sit there and try to box with someone in that bladed stance because they're taking away almost half of their body just with their stance. And you gave round one to the champion, John? I did because she actually had the attacks. She went after, almost had submission attempts that put Lara in bad places, and Lara was unable to do any damage while on top. Has a nice elbow over the top. She's trying to open things up. Alimale needs to settle down, just start putting good pressure on her. That's going to help slow what Lara is doing down. And John, we talked about it at the top of the show, and we talked about it right before our main event. Alimale McFarland has been here before, and she's been deep all the way into round number five. And I remember before that title fight, she said, I was absolutely concerned about 25 minutes. If now she's done it, she knows she can do it again. She knows she can, and Laura is wondering, can I? Right. And when you have doubt, that tends to slow you down, stop your progressions, because you want to conserve, because you're not sure if you can make it. Doesn't mean she can't. No, no. But time will tell. Literally, time will tell. Our referee, Mike Beltran, speaking a little Spanish there. Can you translate? I could, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Basically said, do not grab the fence again. <laughs> fair enough. Nice takedown. Nice use of body positioning and pressures. She utilized Laura's pressure and that push to go for that takedown. Nice job by Alimale. Hawaii State Wrestling Champion on a legit girls team her senior year. And the first ever Bellator Women's Flyway Champ. Top position here, round two. Lara is at least able to grab that foot. That puts her into a corner guard, so she has some ability to move Alinale's body to try to get to a better position. There she goes, reestablishing half guard. Seven and zero. Oh. As a professional, six wins inside the Bellator cage. Looking for some short elbows here. Not only short elbows, but those are hard elbows. That's strong. There's body weight on top of it coming down. Under 90 seconds on the clock here in round two. And you can see Alimale trying to isolate that arm. She's going to get herself back to the position where she's going to bring it up. Unable to do so, that arm is what she's looking for, but because of that half guard, stopping her because she has control of that leg, being able to move her body. Good defense by Alejandra Lara. Gets it back to half guard. She still has that arm isolated with her head, and that's a bad position for Lara to be in, because that rear naked choke is coming. Can she lock it in 40 seconds to work here in round number two? Two high-level grapplers. You know, she's still trying to establish, get that foot in, so she has control with both hooks. Doesn't have it yet, but she's taking her time, being smart, knowing, well, I'm not going to go for a submission that I can't get. Let me start to pound on her. Let me gain some points. Let me show the judges I'm going to want to control. Ten seconds. Yes, I will go. Really good round for the champion.
Ah, the bantamweight champion in the house. And his mentor, Dominic Cruz. The bantamweight champ is going to move up to 145 in South Dakota on August 17th to face off against Noah Lahat. For all fight information, go to Bellator.com. Round three. That'd be some good training to watch, Darren Caldwell and uh, Dominic Cruz. You think so? <laughs> Man, he gives so much credit to Dominic Cruz. And the, the, the mentoring and the tutelage, and of course, everybody's always talked about the knowledge of the game that the Dominator has always had. He's always been one of those guys that is the thinker in the fight. Yes. And that's what gets you wins. One of the things that Alima Lay's corner told her to do, I want you to be first. But she's not being first right now. She's actually accepting. She needs to move her feet, think about angles. The angle's going to get her where she wants to be. Oh, will Darian the Wolf Caldwell be a one off at 145 or might he be thinking about a belt at featherweight as well? That's a story for another time. Good job again by the champion. Well, that was a that was a big miss on that spinning elbow. But Lara tries. She likes those spinning techniques, but if they don't work, this is what can happen. Lady needs to be careful of not getting too high. She's got the one hook. She does not have both. You can see Lara trying to kick that hook free, but she can't do it. Alima Lay has been overwhelming thus far. She has, and this is what, after the second round, what happened, and now going into the third, this is a position Lara needs to start to work quickly to get out of. That was beautiful jujitsu by Alima Lay McFarland, letting her roll underneath. You want to turn towards me so I can hit you? Good, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to be turning over. Lara said she is very difficult to break. Well, she is. I, I've watched all of her fights, and she has her one loss. I watched that fight two times, and there were moments that she could have broken, and she didn't. That just says how gritty she is as a fighter. She is there till the very end. Sabina Mazzo, same city, same country. Yep. And you watched it. She displayed her toughness. Right now, though, she's in a bad position, full mount for Lima Lay McFarland. And she's displaying that same toughness because she just got nailed by a big elbow that hit her right in the forehead. That does not feel good. Going for the arm. Can she get it? Looking for the oh, finish right round. here, right now. You see that round. If she's able to wrap that underneath her arm, that's going to be something that's going to take her arm and put it in that big hyperextension move. She's trying to push that arm away with her foot. She just needs to stay with it, bring it over to the far side, bring it to her right side. That will get her arm bar. That is tight. Laura is a tough, tough girl. That is a tight arm bar. It hurts, but she's sticking in there. Wow. The one thing that that weight on top, that weight is keeping her arm from being hyperextended. So right now, although her arm's straight down, there's not the pressure that there was before. John, we just talked about her toughness and unwillingness to quit. Right now, Lima is looking like, I really don't know where to go from here. I like what I have, but I don't like it too. Limele needs to work to get those hips extended. That hip extension is going to cause the pressure. There you go. all over. Halimale McFarland remains the Bellator Women's Flyweight Champion. From Alejandra Lara and the patience by Halimale McFarland. And she gets the finish. Our fight replay brought to you by Black Card Premium Spice Rum. The bold 93 proof rum that's edgy to the core. Check out this setup on this arm bar. As soon as that arm comes across, you see her leg come across the head. She gets a good, strong arm bar position. She has that thumb up, but Laura fights out of it, brings her feet across to push the hands away. You can see she's utilizing her legs to actually try to save her arm. 
and it does cause Alina Lea a problem in finishing it. The arm is being hyperextended, but she's not giving up. Look towards the end. This is what we talked about. Once she gets it back again, she gets that hyperextension. There's nothing she can do. The hip pressure's too much. She got it down. Eight and oh, seven and oh, inside the Bellator cage. And Alima Lay McFarland eliminates Alejandra Lara. We will make it official when we come back. Fourth career win by armbar for Hawaii's Alima Lay McFarland to make it official, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of an arm bar officially. Three minutes, 55 seconds into round number one. The winner, still undefeated and still Bellator Women's Flyweight World Champion, Elimile, the Eliminator, McFarland. Big John will visit with the champion. Oh, congratulations, Alimale. That was an outstanding demonstration of multiple attacks, going after her with submissions. That arm bar, did you think at one point you might not get it? Yes, the entire time I thought I wasn't going to get it. She was, I told you, I called out, I'm like, this girl's double jointed. Um, she's not going to tap to anything, but I think once she turned the angle a little bit, it shortened her arms a little bit, so I was able to finally get it. But, dude, I did not think she was going to tap. She's amazing. Awesome job. One of the things that we were noticing was your ability to stay calm in positions. When she took you down in the beginning, you went after her, was, were taking your time in setting up and going after the submission attempt. It eventually didn't work, but... What about your maturity now as a fighter and as the champion? Honestly, even though I was in some precarious situations, all I could hear was my corner. My corner over here, Manolo Hernandez, Bill Crawford, Richie Boogeyman Martinez, Liz Carmouche, that whole corner right there. All I did was listen to them. That's all I did. They called out every single move. I listened to them. That's where my maturity is. It's these guys over here. That sounds outstanding. Valerie Letourneau fought earlier tonight, and she says she believes that she deserves a shot at your title. What do you think of that? I 100% agree with her. She deserves this next shot. Let's do it, but I have a small request. I think we should do it back in my hometown in Hawaii. I want a Bellator Hawaii. Let's take all this back home to the islands for the 808. Let's do it. Well, I want a Bellator Hawaii too. Ladies and gentlemen, the champ, flyweight champion, Alima Lay McFarland. Congratulations to the Eliminator. Alima Lay McFarland defends her belt for the very first time.